ask you, do you want me to do the grading or do you want to do the grading? Oh. Okay. I'll go ahead and, and do it and then call you up for... So I'll, I'll greet, introduce the first hymn, and you're playing part of that. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to God's house on this wonderful, wonderful occasion where we celebrate God's true blessings for 80 years here at Trinity Lutheran Church here in West Dallas. Uh, wonderful to be with you this afternoon. Wonderful to serve alongside Pastor Tom Kruger, who was your pastor for 27 years. Uh, and uh, looking forward to delivering to you today God's good and gracious gifts. Just one quick note before we begin uh, on our hymn boards up here, since we're, going, uh, we're singing a lot, we're doing Divine Service Setting 3 without uh, communion. So instead of communion, we're going to sing a couple extra hymns because it's a good day to sing. Uh, and uh, so you'll notice the hymns that are indented are in the old hymnal that most of you probably grew up with. The TLH, it'll be either red, blue, or black in the, or in the pews in front of you. Um, and then the ones that are not indented are in the LSB, the maroon one. If you get confused at all, it says TLH inside your bulletin on the front cover for those that are TLH and those that are not. The reason why we're doing a little bit more back and forth today, I picked these hymns to show continuity for this church's 25th anniversary, I went back and I looked at the order of service. So two of the hymns that we are singing come from when we celebrated our 25th anniversary. Another one of the hymns that we're singing comes from when we celebrated with Pastor Kruger our 50th anniversary. And then the other ones, obviously LSB wasn't around quite yet, uh, are coming from now that we're celebrating our 80th. So trying to show the breadth of our, uh, of our Lutheran hymnody through, through all the years of, of worshiping God and receiving from His gifts in this place. That being said, our opening hymn today is in the older hymnal, the TLH hymnal, and it is hymn 39, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, hymn 39 in the old TLH hymnal. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Join the full throng. Wake up and soar and song. Sound forth in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who o'er all things so wondrously reigneth. Who as on wings of an eagle uplifteth, sustaineth. Has that now seen how thy desires all have been granted in what he ordained? Praise to the Lord who hath fearfully, wondrously made thee. 
Health hath vouchsafed, and when heedlessly falling hath stayed thee, what need or grief ever hath failed of relief? Wings of his mercy did shade thee. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee, who from the heavens the streams of his mercy doth send thee. Ponder on new what the Almighty can do, who with his love doth befriend thee. Praise to the Lord, O let all that is in me adore him. All that hath life and breath, come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. Gladly for I we adore thee. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he has power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. The psalm intro is as printed in the folder, Psalm 84, beginning at verse 1. 
How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And on earth be good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your holy church that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You have kept with your servant David, my father, what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth and with your hand and have fulfilled it this day. Now, therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying, You shall not let a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel, if only your sons pay close attention before me on the throne of Israel, if only your sons pay close attention to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Now, therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built, yet have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea. O Lord, my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers toward this place, and listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. And Listen in heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grand bowl is recorded from a continuation of uh, Psalm 84, beginning verse 8. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of Thanks be to God.
he, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was. But on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess with one another our most holy faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. steadfast in your word, curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest the kingdom from your Son, and bring to naught all he has done. Lord Jesus Christ, your power make known, for you are Lord of lords alone. Defend your holy church that we may sing your praise eternally. Comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity on earth. Support us in our final strife and lead us out of death to life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Yes, sir. We're going to, yeah. Yeah. We're on the same page. Look at that. So I'm assuming that after uh, Pastor Kruger read that wonderful gospel lesson, you'd see a man of short stature standing up here, and you'd probably assume that I'm going to preach on Zacchaeus. 
but I'm not. I'm short enough and you have your own short jokes we don't need to make anymore. 80 years is a long... Yes, you're short too, Montana. You're welcome for that. You've got to stop making eye contact with me. It's you, every time, man. 80 years is a long time, my friends. It's twice the amount of time that the Israelites wandered in the wilderness. It's only six years short of the curse of the Boston Red Sox between winning World Series championships. It's twice as old as I am, which is saying something because my son Killian reminds me so often that I am old as dirt. Do you imagine a three-year-old telling their father that he's old as dirt? <laughs> Happens quite a bit in my house. But we're not just celebrating 80 years today, my friends. We're not just celebrating a number. No, we are celebrating 80 years of God's Word faithfully preached in this place. 80 years of gathering around this altar, or maybe it was over there when you were younger, to receive from our Lord's hand His holy and blessed supper. In other words, my friends, we are celebrating 80 years of God's forgiveness earned by our Lord Jesus Christ, delivered by God's Word for our life and our salvation, bringing us into communion with Himself. And that is why we gather today. We are celebrating the church in this place, serving this neighborhood. But what is church? Is it a building? Is it a people? People have argued about these questions for a very long time, and they still do. The first president of our LCMS Synod, which is apropos today as we celebrate 175 years as a synod, was a man named C.F.W. Walther. And Walther wrote, defining the church, by saying that it is the congregation of saints, that is, the entirety of all those called out of the, ho of the lost and condemned human race by the Holy Spirit through the Word, who truly believe in Jesus Christ and by faith are sanctified and incorporated into Christ. Each one of us here, my friends, were at one time lost and condemned. Each one of us here were called by God through His Word. And each one of us here are now found. We no longer stand condemned. And that is what God has put Trinity in here to do, to be His voice calling the lost, to be His hands baptizing and washing away the sin that condemns. This is what God has called His church today throughout the ages to do. From the time our Lord Jesus gave to the disciples what we call the Great Commission, the church on earth has sought to make disciples by preaching, and by teaching everything that our Lord has commanded. For over 2,000 years, our God has worked through His church to bring people to the light of salvation. We stand today as part of this beautiful and wonderful tradition, our faith. We share in the same word that norms and gives substance and foundation to our faith. We administer those very same sacraments that bring us into the family of God, God's family of faith, and into communion with Himself. And what an absolute blessing it is for us to do that very thing. We are both part of the church Catholic, that is the universal church, the one body of Christ, and at the same time we belong and are part of a local congregation. A congregation that lives and works here in this place. While the church Catholic is more certainly than just a building, it is good and right that we call this building our home. That we meet here to receive from our Lord's hands His good and His gracious gifts. This the church has done since the building of the temple. In our Old Testament lesson today, we encounter King Solomon, David's son, who finished building the temple that his father had started. Without Israel's wandering, God dwelled, throughout Israel's wandering, God dwelled with them in the pillar of cloud and fire. 
When they would stop at a place, God would dwell with them in the tabernacle. But when Israel had taken over the promised land, David decided to build a house worthy of God. He thus began the temple. David died before it was complete, and so Solomon finished his father's work. What we read this morning, what Pastor Kruger read, is part of the dedication of the temple. It was Solomon's prayer to God during that ceremony. And King Solomon's prayer shows us the continuity of God's holy church. The dedication of the temple took place in 957 B.C. So here we are almost 3,000 years later, and yet we can pray the same prayer as King Solomon. There is no God like you, in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love, to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. But will God indeed dwell on earth? Behold, heaven in the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Yet, have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea, O Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes might be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you have said, My name shall be there. That you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers towards this place and listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. And listen in heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. If you noticed, you paid attention. We're going to go back to grammar lessons here a little bit. To the verbs. And that entire prayer, the actions, God does the action. He does the actions in the entirety of this prayer. His actions of dwelling, of listening, and of most importantly, forgiving, will be what we focus on throughout the rest of our time today. As Solomon finished the temple, he asks, will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven in the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Seems insane. Insane to think of the God that made everything, that spoke creation into existence, that exists outside of time and space, and cannot be contained by anything in creation, would in fact dwell in the temple. And yet this is just what God promises. In Ezekiel 37, God says, My dwelling place will be with them. I will be their God and they will be My people. He promises to be with Israel. To dwell with them. To make them His very people by virtue of His presence. And He promises us the same thing today. Jesus Himself promises the disciples when He gives that great commission, Lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. God has been here at Trinity for 80 years. He was here with us when we were a mission plant across the street. He was here with us in April of 1942 when we voted to become our own congregation. He was with us as we waited for our first pastor, Pastor Rimpler, who was installed in December of 42. He was with us when Pastor Gerke accepted the call in 44, when Pastor Kruger accepted his call in 91, and he was here when I accepted the call in 2017. And he'll be here next week on the 27th when, God willing, Silas accepts the call to come here as well. Our Lord was here while we built, while we remodeled, as we grew, as we expanded, He has been here through organ installations and baptisms and confirmations, weddings and funerals. He was here through picnics and salad luncheons, holly fairs and rummage sales. He was here through the starting and closing of a school, and God willing, now is starting again. Our God is our one constant through 80 years of service. Even this building that we all love so much has changed a lot over 80 years. Yet we have a God that is unchanging. His presence with us isn't passive, it's active. Yes, He gives us existence and life, but He also serves us here in His divine service. 
And as King Solomon prayed, our God hears us. Like the psalmist, we cry out, Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call out to you whenever my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, the tower of strength against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the inheritance reserved for those who fear your name. Yes, God has heard our prayers. He listens to our pleas for mercy, and He never leaves those prayers unanswered. The prophet Jeremiah writes, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. We've watched how God has worked in this place. We've watched His hand guide our actions and our decisions. Now, I can't speak to the things that have happened before my time here, but I can tell you that when Pastor Kruger announced his retirement in June of 2017, God acted. You didn't know when you would find a pastor. The district told you it may be a year. And yet, within weeks, I had already heard about you. And you had heard about me. I don't know if that's good or bad or indifferent. And by August, I had accepted the call, and before September, I was installed here. Now, five years later, you may be thinking, Lord, what did you get us into? But at least at the time, right, we can all admit that God answered your prayers and mine. God tells us in Psalm 50, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. And this is what we do here, my friends. In this place, And this church, this group of saints who is called, gathered, and enlightened by the Holy Spirit, we call upon our Lord. Just like we did at the beginning of this service. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For we are always in trouble. Some of us more than others. As you look through the history in your bulletin, you will see both the joys and the challenges of existing 80 years in this place. In our 80 years, we have had debts for building projects, organs that quit halfway through a pastor's first year here in the midst of a service. We've had people that we love and trusted who have betrayed that trust. We suffer in the church, as any family suffers. But we suffer together. And we suffer as one body. We have also had a lot to rejoice We've had weddings and baby showers. We've dedicated those building projects and we burned the debt when we paid it off. Yet all of these extraordinary times of joy pale in comparison to what we experience each and every week as we gather together in this place. Yes, new organs are great. New church signs make a big difference out in front. New schools are exciting, and if I'm completely honest, a little terrifying as well. But the miracle that we see each and every time we enter this place is the dead being made alive. The sinner being made into a saint. The God that is so unlike His creation, so lofty and far, being right here. Not to judge you, but to give you His very gifts for your forgiveness, life, and salvation. The joy of union with God. The joy of sins forgiven. The crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ giving Himself to you. These are joys that can never be experienced outside of this place. These are the joys that we celebrate here today. This congregation is a blessing. This building is a blessing. But all of us here are simply conduits through which our Lord flows His grace, His love, and His mercy to all of the people that gather here. We love this place not because of the building. We love this place not because of the sinful man that stands before you making bad jokes in the midst of a sermon. We love this place because this is where God is. We love this place because this is where His gifts are. My dear friends, you are no longer lost. 
you are no longer condemned. We, like King Solomon, pray God to hear us. And we pray that when He does hear, He will forgive. And this is not a prayer of uncertainty, for we rest on His promises. On account of His Son, Jesus Christ, we know He hears us. And He forgives us. We pray today that this place will stand for another 80 years and more, petitioning our dear Lord to forgive us poor, miserable sinners. We close with two sections of the hymn that we're getting ready to sing, but I thought that they were a really good way of closing. Now we may gather with our King, even in the lowliest dwelling. Praises to Him we may bring, His wondrous mercy forthtelling. Jesus, His grace to us accords, Spirit and life are all His words. His truth does hallow this temple. Still we our earthly temples rear, that we may herald His praises. They are the homes where He draws near, and little children embraces. Beautiful things in them are said, God there with us His covenant made, making us heirs of His kingdom. And heirs we shall be, my friends. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, may it guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. We get out the old hymnals again, and we sing together hymn 467, Built on the Rock, the Church Doth Sand. TLH hymnal, hymn 467. on the rock the church doth stand even when steeples are falling crumbled have spires in every land bells still are chiming and calling, calling the young and old to rest. But above all the soul distress, longing for rest everlasting. Surely in temples made with hands, not will be so dwelling. High above earth his temple stands. All earthly temples excelling. Yet he whom hands cannot contain Chose to abide on earth with men Built in our bodies His temple. We are God's house of living stones, built it for His habitation. He through baptismal grace his own 
heirs of his wondrous salvation. Were we but to his name to tell, yet he would deign with us to dwell with all his grace and his favor. Now we may gather with our King even in the lowliest dwelling. Praises to him we there may bring his wondrous mercy forth telling. Jesus, his grace to us accords, spirit and life are all his words. His truth doth hallow the temple. Still we are earthly temples rear, that we may herald his praises. They are the homes where he dree draws near, and little children embraces. Beautiful things in them are said. God there with us his covenant made, making us heirs of his kingdom. Here stands the font before our eyes, telling how God did receive us. The altar rolls Christ's sacrifice, and what his table doth give us. Here sounds the word that doth proclaim Christ yesterday, today the same. Yea, and for I are Redeemer. Grant then, O God, which men roam, that when the church bells are ringing, many in saving faith may come, where Christ his message is bringing. My own, my own, no me. My face shall see, my peace I live within you. We continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Praise, glory, and honor be unto Thee, Lord Jesus Christ, for Thou hast been pleased to establish Thy church in this place in which for eighty years we have been permitted to hear unmolested Thy holy word 
and to celebrate Thy sacraments. Here Thou hast blessed Thy people with Thy presence and caused Thy face to shine upon them. We praise Thee for showing us the way of salvation, for warning and arising us when our souls were imperiled, for comforting us with heavenly consolations when sin and trouble weighed down our hearts, and for giving us a foretaste of eternal life. We praise Thee for every gracious advent into a human heart, for the children whom Thou didst receive as Thine own through baptism, and whom Thou didst instruct in the saving doctrines of Thy Word, for all whose burden of sin Thou didst remove, and whose feet Thou didst guide upon this way of life, for all those whose doubts Thou didst dispel, and whose sighs Thou didst quiet, for all whom Thou here didst add to Thy church. We praise Thee that Thou hast enlarged Thy vineyard here, and with the outward growth in numbers has preserved the purity of doctrine. And we beseech Thee this day to continue Thy mercies unto us. Preserve among us evermore the precious treasure of Thy Word. Give us at all times godly teachers who as faithful stewards of Thy mysteries will feed Thy flock with all that is needful for salvation. Give unto this congregation to young and old, hearing ears and open and willing hearts, that they may bear and hear Thy word gladly and accept it joyfully. Let not the preaching of Thy gospel among them be in vain. Make Thy word in them a well of living water, to refresh their souls and to spring up into everlasting life. Seal Thy Word in their hearts by witness of Thy Spirit. Let them grow in the knowledge of Thy Son. Cause them to increase in faith and love, that Christ may be more and more formed in them, and they may be found meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. O Lord Jesus, who has promised to preserve Thy church upon earth unto the end of days. Let this church be a light shining unto many, a city upon a hill which cannot be hid. Make it a testimony and a witness to them that are without, that sinners may be converted unto Thee, and that many may come and with us receive the promised inheritance. Abide with us with Thy grace, with Thy word, with Thy light with thy blessing, with thy protection, and with thy love, that we may be prepared to enter finally into the great jubilee in the new Jerusalem. Grant this for thine own love's sake, and in your name. Amen. We sing together, my friends, uh, hymn, uh, in the old hymnal, TLH hymnal, hymn not, uh, 639. Hymn 639, For many years, O God of grace. has been thy dwelling place and we thy congregation upon the precious cornerstone our faith is built on Christ alone is still one foundation today we pray let us greet thee Lord and meet thee here with singing all our praises to thee bringing here children have been born anew 
as manifold as morning dew, their vows to thee confessing. Here many found a table spread, they ate Christ's body with the bread and drank the cup of blessing. Today we pray, let none falter at thy altar, we adore thee, gladly worship here before thee. Here, when the marriage vows were made, both bride and groom besought thine aid. Thy love their own transcending. Here, mourners with their troubled hearts have found the peace thy word imparts, the joy that has no ending. Today we pray, may the story of thy glory here resounding be a song of grace abounding. I invite you to rise as we boldly pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the salutation in Benedict Camus on page 201. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn. Our closing hymn today, a hymn of thanksgiving and praise. Hymn 895, Now Thank We All Our God. and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom his world rejoices who from a mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may the 
this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, who earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. You may be seated. Good afternoon, friends. Just a reminder, we do have dinner prepared downstairs after service. Please come down and join us. Uh, thank you for being here as we celebrate 80 years of God's good and gracious gifts. And uh, here's to another at least 80 more, yeah? All right. Um, I have no other announcements other than if you, if, you didn't, if you weren't here this morning to pick up a May calendar, you can pick those up on your way out. Uh, for all the Trinity folks, if you weren't here this morning, we do have a regularly scheduled voters meeting uh, on May. What's the date, Paul? 8th. You're not Paul. 8th. May 8th that I didn't put on the calendar, so make sure you write that in. So uh, May 8th, regularly scheduled voters meeting right immediately following service on Sunday the 8th. Um, uh, I remind you so often that Jesus is so much better than me by all the mistakes that I made and you bear with me. So, thank you for that. Let us go in peace and serve our Lord. Amen. Amen.